we have two other avenues that we are pursuing. One is to find more objects like Oumuamua. And uh, this year, there will be a new observatory in Chile called the Rubin Observatory that will employ a camera of 3.2 gigapixels, a thousand times more pixels than uh, a cell phone camera. And it will monitor the southern sky every four days. And so we hope to find Oumuamua-like objects from the same family with this uh, telescope uh, every few months. And then uh, we could potentially use the Webb telescope to study them. Uh, that's something we didn't have with Oumuamua because the Webb telescope was not launched yet. And uh, the other path of investigation is uh, related to objects that collide with Earth. Uh, these are called meteors, uh, and uh, they are uh, catalogued by the U.S. government. The U.S. government operates a network of satellites that are looking for the heat emitted by ballistic missiles because they pose a national security threat. But every now and then, there is an object that comes from outer space that collides with Earth, and they can see the fireball as the object burns up as a result of its friction on air. And then they, re they catalog. NASA uh, then gets the data because it doesn't represent anything to do with national security. So they release it to the, the scientific community in a catalog. Uh, and um, I asked my student um, to look back um, at the, that catalog. And, and uh, we found uh, an object that was interstellar, just like Oumuamua, that was moving uh, actually faster than 95% of the stars outside the solar system. So it was really fast and it maintained its integrity down to the lower atmosphere. So it was, it was uh, made of material that is very tough. Uh, and so um, we published it uh, with the undergraduate student, Amir Siraj, that was his name, uh, not far from your first name, Amir. Uh, and, um, uh, and then I decided to lead an expedition to the Pacific Ocean, to the location of that uh, fireball, that explosion, and we retrieved materials from the bottom of the ocean that is uh, about two kilometers deep. And um, we analyzed 10% of those materials so far, and we found some uh, fraction of the material, about a tenth of it, uh, of these tiny fragments that we collected. They were less than a millimeter in size. Uh, about a tenth of them had a, a chemical composition different from uh, the materials that made the solar system. And we are now hoping to go again to that site to collect bigger fragments that would be able to tell us much more about the original object. So this expedition that, uh, you know, it was filmed by Netflix. There would be a documentary released within a year about it. Uh, but um, it offers an opportunity to put our hands on material of objects that uh, came from outside the solar system for a few million dollars in cost. Whereas if you wanted to do the same for an object like Oumuamua that is passing near Earth, um, it would cost billions of dollars to do the same, uh, as with the asteroid uh, Bennu that I mentioned before. So, so looking for interstellar meteors is one of the additional uh, objectives of the Galileo project and searching for artificial objects, you know, that that um, uh, were unusual in terms of their speed, in terms of their material strength. Perhaps they were made by an advanced technological civilization. Wow. You had an essay, Professor, um, that was titled uh, something like, what if aliens turned out to be non-vegetarian? The reason I want to ask you about this is because I guess the question comes down to that if alien civilizations do come and live with us, if somehow we merge, are humans in danger in any way, according to you? Well, Stephen Hawking a decade ago argued that we should be really careful in transmitting radio signals because there might be predators out there and they will come to haunt us. Um, the thing is, we don't know the consequences. We have been broadcasting since, uh, you know, for a hundred years and um, so these signals went out. We cannot stop them. They are propagating at the speed of light. And so far, they reached about 100 light years. And, um, you know, there are, um, within 100 light years, there are probably of the order of uh, tens of thousands of stars. We don't know if any of them has uh, technological civilizations. So 
we might not hear back until these signals go another factor of 10 in distance when there would be a good likelihood for an active technological civilization with radio receivers that could search for us. Uh, eventually, the entire galaxy will be aware of us, but it will take a while. It will take tens of thousands of years, which by uh, cosmological terms, you know, it's really a short time. But for us, we still benefit from the fact that we are visible as a technological civilization only to our immediate vicinity. The signals of light did not make it still to very large distances. Um, but I don't agree with uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Hawking. And he, uh, he, by the way, he visited my home about uh, seven years ago. Uh, uh, sorry, it was um, actually uh, nine years ago, nine years ago. Um, and um, I don't agree with him because I think that uh, we are not that significant. Um, you know, we tend to think that we deserve attention. And by the way, that's one reason that Enrico Fermi said, where is everybody? And when a lonely person asks you this question, where is everybody? You tell that lonely person, you know, don't be presumptuous. You are not that attractive that everyone will come to sit next to you and you will see your partner immediately. You have to be proactive. You have to at least look through the windows of your home and see if uh, the, the, there is anyone out there that you might like or at, uh, go out of your home and go to dating sites. Okay, that's what you say. to. And Enrico Fermi didn't really use a telescope to search for uh, aliens. He was just saying, where is everybody? As if they were supposed to be in Los Alamos where he was having lunch uh, in the 1950s, uh, which, you know, it's a very short period of time relative to the billions of years that uh, cosmic history is measured by. So that's very presumptuous. And... Uh, you know, it may well be that there are lots of relics. You know, I calculated based on the interstellar meteor that we know about, there should be of order a million objects from interstellar space right now, uh, the size of a person roughly, or a meter in size, within the orbit of the Earth around the sun. A million of them. And we, one of them collides with Earth every decade. Uh, simply because it happens to cross the path of the Earth around the Sun. But most of them just pass in the darkness. We can't see them because they reflect very little sunlight. But but if I had a few billion dollars, you know, I would engage in, in a search, a dedicated search, and looking through the rocks, you know, that the, there must be a lot of rocks, and checking if there is anything other than rocks, if there is any space trash, from other civilizations. This is something we've never engaged in. There are only a few interstellar objects known so far. And uh, I think we should definitely check our backyard for any packages that may have arrived from a neighbor.